just saying, if you want to get to a certain point in the video, I have timestamps down below in the description. So, yeah, if you just want to look at that, you're welcome. Back to your regular scheduled programming. I wasn't planning on making a video today. Um, you know, there really wasn't anything to make of the New York Jets player profiles. They didn't do that great, so I wasn't going to do another one of those. But, um, I did see an article while I was, um, watching Superstore. It's a show on NBC that's on Hulu. It doesn't matter, but, um, I saw an article. I got an alert on my phone. It was from, um, ESPN. Um, but it's a mini was writing an article, uh, it was like, could Jets succeed on a defense without Jamal Adams or without catalyst Jamal Adams or something? And it just made me think, could we? Um, in this article, he doesn't really talk about if we could survive without him. Well, I didn't really read it thoroughly, but it kind of, he just gives like a deep dive into what this defense is kind of all about. And I, and I pulled up the stats from, you know, the game, the two games that Jamal Adams wasn't in see if you know it affected anything so um, i hope you guys will enjoy this video now let's get started right, so he starts off the article with good news for the new york jets for the first time in two decades they won't have to face quarterback tom brady and that is terrific news because now the Patriots will be horrible. And if you think Jared Stidham's going to do something, watch his first drive as an NFL, you know, player. You, you'll you find it. You know what? I'm going to just pop it on the screen right now. There's not a better place in football to learn. It's blocked by Juni. That's picked off. They're going to come the other way. And this is Jamal Adams with a block and a pick six. All right. Then he gives us some bad news. He says that we have to face... Patrick Mahomes and Russell Wilson in the same year, which that does suck. But I mean, we're not going to have to face him every single year. I mean, one's in the AFC, one's in the NFC. We'll have to face Russell Wilson every four years unless he moves to another team. But assuming he stays in the Seahawks or retires, we won't have to face him in another four years. So hallelujah for us. All right. And then he, you know, goes on to say that this will be a fantastic season for the New York Jets defense. Um, which overachieved in 2019 against a favorable schedule. Um, this year they play six of the top 11 offenses from 2019 based on total yards, which means they will be challenged in new ways by some of the best players in the sport, you know, which makes sense because, you know, as you noted earlier, we're going against Patrick Mahomes and the Kansas City Chiefs who just won the Super Bowl, Russell Wilson and the Seattle Seahawks who make the playoffs basically every year. So, yeah, it's going to be a real challenge for the Jets. We also were playing the San Francisco 49ers. May I remind you, they did go to the Super Bowl last year, too. So, we have a pretty tough schedule. And also, you know, note Arizona Cardinals. They just got De uh, DeAndre Hopkins. And uh, Kyler Murray just won Rookie of the Year. They should be exciting. Um, I was about to say, we played the Buccaneers, but we don't. That's next year. Um, so yeah, then he goes to say, Jets defense coordinator Greg Williams is a resourceful coach who knows how to utilize personal personnel based on matchups, but he's dealing with some obvious deficiencies. Once again, the Jets do not have a le legitimate edge rusher, threat, or a shutdown cornerback. He also might have a hole at safety, depending on how the Jamal Adams soap opera shakes out. It will be hard to improve last season's number seven ranking without their best defense player. After examining the Jets' offense on Tuesday, let's take a closer look at the defense's position. Uh, I didn't make a video on the offense article, but I could do that tomorrow, so watch out. Now, um, I'm really not going to go on what he does for the defensive tackle and everything because this video is about Jamal Adams, not Quentin Williams and who knows. Pierre here, but I will say that we could get a legitimate edge rusher in a trade with dealing with Jamal Adams, or we could get a legitimate cornerback by signing Logan Ryan. You know, we have a ton of options. You know, with Jamal Adams, he basically holds the key to the defense because we could get a player who might even be better than Jamal Adams. You know, just saying, but 
yeah, so the real title of the video is Could We Survive Without Jamal Adams on Defense? Now, if you don't know, last year, um, week 15, 14, um, I don't know, Jamal Adams got hurt in the Cincinnati Bengals game. Um, he was he played through the injury basically the whole time, but he you know played horrible that game. He had like I don't know two tackles that game. It was pretty bad. So we lost our technically our first game without Jamal Adams in I don't know several years. You know we our defense played pretty bad, and yeah against the Bengals team because you know we're talking about the one and eleven Bengals. No, they were 0-11 at the time. Worst team in the league. Already, I think they already get, had the number one pick guaranteed at that time. And here we go. The Jets are the first team to lose to them. Like, we were the first team to lose to the Dolphins. We had a pretty rough year last year. But, um, so we lost to the Bengals. And then next game was against the Miami Dolphins, which we did okay to. Um, we finished, we won the game 22 to 21. Sam Ficken had a last second field goal. I think he kicked it at three seconds. It's pretty crazy because Vincent Smith, he like, he did like, they did a jet sweep and he got us kind of into field goal range, but we needed another play to be able to move into it. And it was a pass interference, got us into field goal range and booyah. Dolphins coach was pretty pissed, but um, you know we didn't play horrible that game on the defensive side. Um, we played really good red zone defense because the Dolphins, you know, didn't score a single touchdown. They scored one, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven field goals. Holy crap! I should know that because that's easy math. But. I don't know. Every time the Dolphins would go down to the red zone, they would have a successful drive. They started one drive on the four-yard line, marched all the way to the end zone, and they just had horrible offensive end zone. I mean, the offensive end zone efficiency or something. Red zone, red zone, that's it. And they, like, were amazing. Our defense was horrible, and then all of a sudden we would get to the red zone and they would be sucky. But um, I do want to note that we had uh, some pretty good uh, stats. I mean, we did get an interception that game. Um, Ryan Fitzpatrick threw a ball that he shouldn't have thrown. Um, uh, James Burgesses had 12 total tackles. Um, Daryl Roberts had seven, and Kyden Brown had five. You know, it was one of those games where, you know, we it wasn't really great defensive-wise, as I said. Uh, we had two sacks that game, and both of them were by Jordan Jenkins. But, you know, overall, I mean, we really it didn't really change much without Jamal Adams. Um, I feel like this is probably how we would have played with Jamal. Maybe he would have brought a little more juice, and we probably would have did a bit more better, and, this, and it wouldn't have been down to a nail-biting end. But let's go on to the next game without Jamal, which was the Jets – Versus the Ravens. Now, if we had Jamal Adams, we probably wouldn't have won the game anyway. The Ravens had the MVP on the team at the time. Lamar Jackson actually led the game in passing and rushing yards for his team. And Sam Darnold bought out that game. He had like 218 yards. It was crazy fun to watch that game. Even though we did horrible on defense. Um, our leading tackler was Daryl Roberts, I believe, with seven total tackles. Um, I remember he had this super-duper hard hit in the end zone. It, it, it looked like he was Jamal Adams. But, um, yeah, Daryl Roberts had seven total tackles as our safety. Um, James Berg assisted seven, you know, kind of all that. Um, we didn't – I don't think we – and we had one sack, no – yeah, Terrell Bashman had one sack that game. So – Overall, we did pretty poorly in this game. Oh my god, what is happening? Oh my god. Okay, sorry about that. But, um, yeah. Oh my, I lost my track of thought. But, okay, so I don't really feel like we would have won anyway. 
like the game, I don't think we would have done better on defense without Jamal Adams. You know, I feel like we would have played probably the same. Maybe we would have held the Ravens to like 35 points. You know, maybe Lamar Jackson went and had thrown five touchdowns. But, you know, it is what it is. But uh, I really feel like this kind of would have turned out, you know, as Jamal Adams. Um, I feel like maybe we would have lost to the Cowboys if not of Jamal Adams because he had that game-saving hit. But, you know, I just really don't know. Um, the two games without Jamal Adams, we played how everyone thought we were going to play. And, yeah, may I also note you, in Jamal Adams' two seasons with the Jets, we went 4-12 and both seasons, I believe. And Jamal Adams was on the team. And he made the Pro Bowl one year while we were 4-12 and and was a rookie one year. But needless to say, I feel like we could do just fine with Jamal, noting that Ashton Davis looks pretty impressive. And I think he could, I don't know, be Jamal Adams' heir or something because he's pretty versatile. He's pretty fast. Um, he played cornerback his first year. He might get more interceptions than Jamal Adams. I don't know. But, uh, yeah, let's get on to that. If you are returning, welcome back. I love having you here. I'm cons I think you're already subscribed, so might consider dropping a like. And if this is your first time watching the Jujets channel, hope you enjoyed your experience. And you might even consider subscribing or maybe even a like. Um, as you can see, I've added new things to my setup. Um, I got the Toby versus Michael 2-pack. Um, I think uh, so that's going really well. Um, I added this Skylander. Uh, I used to play that game and I just kind of wanted one on my desk. And I have this Casey Kane diecast NASCAR car because he was my favorite NASCAR driver. Just a little kind of touches. Um, and I also have these tickets up here that I put up, I think, two days ago on Monday. And you might be noticing that my laptop charger and my laptop case is also right here. So just a little stuff. And if you're wondering what this is, it's just a picture um, that was already there. And I kind of like having it right there. So, yeah. Thank you guys for watching. And as always, go Jets. Peace.